Okay, quick demonstration to show you how to use IDP initiated sign on with your SAML IDP to update group membership uh, dynamically for Zscaler internet access. So um, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to go to 888.com, my favorite gambling website. I've been blocked access, and uh, what I've done is I've put a little trigger in here to update um, the groups, and I'll come back to that in a second. So um, this is my um, domain controller. Uh, I'm going to find my user, Mark Ryan, in there. And I'm going to go member of, and I'm going to add the user to a group, internet adult. Uh, so I'm now an adult. And my policy um, means that I should be able to then access um, the, the Gambler website. So the first thing I'm going to do is update my um, group membership. It's going to trigger a little couple of redirects. Um, and now I can go to 888.com and I get blocked access. Uh, I still get blocked access to uh, adult websites because <laughs> uh, that's what we want. So, um, you know, I can then come in here and I can uh, find that and I can remove myself again. Yes, I want to remove, apply, um, and I could update the groups again. Um, and now I should be blocked then to 888.com. Okay, great. So what's going on under the hood? Um, so there's a couple of things that are going on. If we um, look at this uh, link, Let's just copy the link here and I'll paste it up here. And it's going to my ADFS server, it's triggering an IDP initiative to sign on, and it's logging into this Reliant Party Trust called ZS2. Hmm, all very good. Um, but what exactly does that mean and how does that differ from service provider initiated sign on? So let's take a look at my ADFS server, which looks like it's going to reboot shortly, but let's uh, ignore that. Here's my Reliant Party Trust. Um, and I've got one, I've got a specific identifier, it's called ZS2 here, and that's what I'm, uh, I'm triggering on. Um, and um, there's my identifier, it's ZS2, I've also got the Zscaler2 identifier, which is what comes in the SAML uh, AuthN request from, um, from an SP-initiated um, re request. So everything that we do when ZApp signs in, um, or when you just use the pack file variable. That's all service provider initiated. If we go to um, Zscaler, you make a request to Zscaler, and Zscaler goes, huh, you need to authenticate to me, and I'm gonna trigger an, an SP-initiated request to the, from the service provider, Zscaler, to the IDP, and it triggers with this identifier. Um, and it also says, here's my relay state, here's the thing to respond back to, and all of that's fine. With IDP-initiated sign-on, we're going, to we're going to target this specific identifier here. And we've got two identifier, um, two endpoints. Our standard endpoint when you configure it is SFC SSO. And that's, um, that's a, again, in the SP-initiated request, that comes as part of the AuthN request um, to say, hey, come back here. Um, when we don't specify one, and here I've given it a different index, an index of one, I've triggered this S SSO update um, endpoint. Um, and at the end of that endpoint, I've also put an identifier, this 103550, and I'll come on to that in a second, but that's our organization ID. And so all I've said is um, that the default one um, is, the one, is the one that's the service provider one. And, we, and, and I, I don't want to set it as a default for the very reason is that SP initiated tells the identify, identity provider what to re reply to. On service provider initiate uh, on um, sorry on the IDP initiated sign on which we're triggering by um, specifying this identifier ZS2, there is no um, uh, endpoint uh, provided as part of the IDP initiated one. So we need to specify it to be the default one. And because it's the default, the user will sign into the IDP, um, and the IDP will say, "Hey, I'm going to send you to my default endpoint." which is this SSO update you, um, endpoint with this identifier. And that's what then consumes that group membership um, or the updated SAML assertion um, and, and updates the group into ZPA, um, ZIA, sorry. Um, so that's, that's what's configured there. Um, let's just take a quick, um, a quick look at um, admin.zscaler2.net. Let's log in here. Um, admin um, suppose this. Uh, 
And so if I go to my company profile here, I can see my company identifier there, that 103550. So that's where we get that from. So it's just the number part that we want to put into that SSO uh, underscore UPD slash, and then that number. Um, so that's all we need to configure there. Um, obviously, what I've done um, under my uh, end user notifications, um, I've put a, a notification that says, hey, you know, here's the reference to the uh, IDP initiated sign on, log into the Ryan Party uh, ZS2, and that's what will trigger that uh, IDP initiated sign on. So, relatively simple, you know. From, a, from out of the box, we say, oh, hang on, we don't support IDP initiated sign on. We absolutely do not support IDP initiated sign on for, for getting users into the service in terms of um, Zscaler app or pack file configuration. But we do support IDP initiated sign on for this function, this group, this group update or the SAML assertion update once the user is signed in. Hope that helps.